Hello everybody, um, I've uh, rebuilt the uh, supercell here, except I've used a third type of uh, liquid to uh, get something not seen in any other supercell video before. Also to add a lot of recent requests about showing the supercell again. By the way, these little uh, LEDs here have nothing to do with the lines that actually appear. I have a video from years ago using one light source. Um, uh, one single LED light source, and then people didn't believe that. Then I went outside and I used the sun, or actually funneled sunlight into the supercell and held it up against the sun and showed you that the pattern's the same, looking at constructive and destructive interference between the magnetodielectric, and of course dielectricity is the extrinsic loss of energy or inertia of the dielectric, just as ice would be relative to water, both one and the same thing. So let's take a look here, and uh, let me zoom in. Hold on a second, light. Clamp down the old camera and uh, zoom in. Let's uh, use something for a uh, focus here. For the camera to focus on. There we go. A little trinket because, you know, there's nothing here to focus on. At least not yet. Here I have, uh, of course, a, a standard polar magnet split right here along the line of inertia with a Sharpie marker. And you should see that uh, this supercell is uh, substantially more sensitive and that also means, there you go, take a look at that. If I actually turn it here, you can see the plane of inertia right here, right here, this bright white line right over here. I know immediately because this is uh, red shifted over here, it has more of a red tinge, and this is more yellow towards bluish tinge. This is the south pole of the magnet. This is the geomagnetic precession that exists along any and every magnet due to the Lamore frequency, i.e. the three-dimensional force vector, take a piece of wire, and uh, bend it uh, like a sheet, uh, an S, and then take each end of the S and bend it inverse to the other, and you have the extrapolation of the interior geometry of a torus, and that in full three-dimensional extrapolation, of course, is the toroid. I try not to keep it one place too long because it actually burns in the uh, uh, ferromagnetic uh, induction of the ferrofluid that's actually between this. There's actually... Uh, only a few microns of fluid between these two optically flat pieces of glass. You can't use regular glass. You can see an effect with regular glass, but you actually have to use uh, optically flat glass, which is basically just super, super flat glass within a certain frequency of, uh, of flatness on the glass. It's rather expensive. You can get it from China. And if we put the magnet underneath the sill here while I'm holding it with one hand, I'll let you see something you're not seeing in any of the other feral cell videos. If you look over here, and also two over here, but it's more apparent over here, this is the um, the uh, north pole of the magnet. You can see the reddish tinge, and over here it's more bluish yellow tinge. This is the south pole. You can actually see these concentric rings right here, the funnel. Some people say, oh, that looks like a black hole. You get this three-dimensional effect as you're looking in. And if I actually undo the camera for a second, take away the magnet, and let you see it angled on, because you're only looking at a few microns of fluid here. You can see, just give it a second to develop. You can see those concentric rings funneling in towards the dielectric. Everywhere you actually see light, you see constructive magnetism. Everywhere you see the absence of light, you see constructive dielectric. This is the interplay uh, between the conjugate geometry of the magneto and dielectric, where magnetism lets the light manifest out to your eyes or towards the camera. And wherever is the absence of light, you see uh, either the plane of inertia, or this is, of course, looking, that's uh, at the south pole, correct? That's blue shifted, and if I turn it over, you'll actually see, no, that was, this is the south pole, the other side is the, the north pole. They put it here on top, let you take a peek. This is the simplex geometry of the magnetodielectric, the hyperboloid, and respectively, the torus between these two geometries as they interplay. Here is the plane of inertia right here. Let me move the magnet over. Try not to keep it sitting in one spot too long. The more sensitive you make the cell, the more sensitive it is to burning in. What happens if you actually take a magnet that's the shape of the magnetic field itself? And it doesn't matter if the magnet is flat. It doesn't have to be perfectly donut shaped. You know, a donut is like a uh, well, a tube that where you bend, take both ends and you bring it together where it is actually cylindrical and comes back in on itself. It, it doesn't matter if it's actually a flat torus. We're going to take a flat neodymium iron boron magnet here. 
a ring magnet, if you will. And a ring, of course, is just a torus. And bring it right over here. Here you can actually see the point of uh, dielectric acceleration or counter space right here at the center. And you see this hypertrochoid or spirograph-like pattern, both on the inside and the outside. Yeah, this is the magnetodielectric and the constructive and destructive interference. Let me place it underneath here. See if I can do a focus in. There you go. In this case, everywhere we see the absence of light is the actual ring itself. In other words, the face of the ring itself manifests as the black because now we actually have a magnet. Just think about the geometries for a second in simplex pressure mediation where we have the absence of light around the entire ring underneath the supercell would be like the uh, either pole of a standard uh, cylinder or cube magnet, just like I showed you. But we have two, since the magnet is shaped like a torus, either side of the toroidal ring becomes the uh, increasing inertia and acceleration towards the dielectric. And out here, of course, you see constructive interference of the magnetic. You also, too, see at the crossing points, little bright dots, if you look really closely. You see those little bright dots? Yeah. You see a halo effect right here. Now what happens if I place this ring magnet on top and put another magnet underneath and we have the fields fight each other or actually accelerate towards one another. Let me place it right here. You can see the magnet underneath right here. And if I hold the magnet, the ring magnet flat to keep it from flipping over and I'll let it flip over here in a second. You can see the pole right here as it's wanting. Now I'll place it directly underneath it and I'll actually take the magnet that's underneath the bottom of the glass and kind of spin it, rotate it around a little bit. And you see how the magnetic and the dielectric are interplaying with each other. Now, if I hold this magnet flat so it doesn't flip over and I twist the magnet underneath to bring it under what is conventionally called uh, magnetic repulsion, which is actually true magnetism. The magnet right now is wanting to flip over, but look at the field geometry. I'm trying to hold it holding this. I'm going to let go of the magnet on top here so it flips over. You see that little pole right there? This is actually not a pole of the magnet up above or the magnet down below. How it's... You see that? Now if I hold it like this and flip the magnet over, you see the magnet's actually right about to flip over. I'm trying to do it in slow motion. There we go. This magnet and you see the toroidal pattern I'm holding this so the magnet underneath and the magnet above well I'll let it fall a little bit but you can see what I'm doing with the magnet underneath you see the pole underneath there but if I remove this magnet completely away and I only have the magnet up above you can still see right at the center there excuse me I shook the camera a little bit right at the center there we still have that little black spot right at the center there's nothing right here. There's only the field pressure. But since our magnet is shaped like the toroidal shape of the magnetic field itself, we still have what we'd see if this were a solid magnet, except really tiny. But if I put them under so-called magnetic acceleration below, we're able to see a cross-section of the plane of inertia at the center here. And between these two, if I bring them together, there would be one magnet, they would both combine. Actually what happens since the bottom one is a sphere magnet and it's almost exactly the same diameter as the hole on this toroidal magnet, it'll actually fit right in the center and this will look like a ring around Saturn and the sphere magnet is almost sitting directly inside of it. Let me see if I could actually do, there we go. Just so you uh, wanted to believe me there. There's the magnet, it's actually sitting there underneath simplex field pressure. If I put it right up on top here, we have a Saturn-shaped magnet. We have two magnets sitting in perfect field harmony with one another. We put it underneath the supercell. Now it just looks like exactly what a regular cube magnet or cylinder magnet would look like. We're looking at two magnetic fields under simplex field pressure mediation, as Mother Nature does everything. Looks like any pole of any magnet. Let me flip the uh, this uh, Saturn-shaped uh, binary magnet over. And we'll see the exact same thing, except uh, this is, it looks to be redshift, North Pole, let me see over here. Yeah, this is brighter yellow. This is the South Pole right here. And you can actually see here at the center, you can see where it's already burning in a little bit on the supercell. 
I bring it right over here, you can see the concentric rings. Out here, of course, we see constructive and destructive interference. Everywhere there's absence of light is a dielectric. Everywhere we see the presence of light is constructive magnetic interference. It's constructive and destructive interference between uh, the conjugate uh, hyperboloid and torus. But we see a bright ring right here, a black ring right here, a bright ring, and then a darker ring, and then a darker and a darker, and then, of course, it fades to black. Here we actually have, since it's right here, just like a vortex, and it is a field vortex. And what is a vortex, by the way? Everybody loves to talk about vortexes. Everybody loves vortexes. A vortex, just like an apple, if you were to cut an apple directly in half from top to bottom, is one half of a torus. That's all a vortex is. Just think about it. Imagine a donut, like a big beefy donut, right? You take it and you cut it along its uh, longest, uh, you know, right along, uh, well, the, the meat of the torus of the donut, like if this were a complete torus, I cut it right from here all the way through to over here. That's what we're looking at. So we're looking at a vortex. That's what a vortex is. It's just half of a torus. I'm actually rotating that slightly with my hand underneath the supercell. I think I could push this out kind of easily because it's not held there in any way other than the magnetic field. There we go. It doesn't want to come out. There we go. See? It's just those two. And let's go back to our cube magnet. Once again, we're looking at a ring around a sphere. And we're going to take a look at a cube magnet once again. We put it on top and put it up underneath. Here we see the plane of inertia where no magnetic um, flux exists. Here we see the uh, North Pole. I mean, excuse me, the South Pole. And here we see a uh, redshift um, towards the, uh, this is the North Pole of the magnet. All right. Let me put it up underneath here again, so you can see it. Very simple. You see those concentric little rings right over here? As I'll try to hold it in place, you see them develop right there. You see this bright white line right here? Yep. But black bands on either side, this is the plane of inertia. This is where no magnetism exists. This is the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, from one end of the universe to the other, the magnetodielectric. Now let me place it on one pole. Right over here, through the uh, getting magnetic induction where the actual uh, magnetic field is causing ferromagnetic polarization of the nanoparticles of the uh, ferrofluid in the solution. It bends, the more sensitive you make it, the more it bends in. Let me put a ring magnet up here on top again. There we go. And put my sphere magnet underneath. And it wouldn't matter if it's the sphere magnet I was putting underneath it or the cube magnet. People wanted me to show this. Actually, it's like, what does happens when you sandwich two magnets between the cell? I'm just rotating the sphere magnet underneath there. But let me hold this in place while I flip it to the other pole, slowly and gently underneath. It's hard to do. Let me actually separate the two, which I've separated it over here. And I'm holding the ring magnet in place, and now I'm flipping the pole of the spherical magnet underneath while holding this in place. And of course, the ring magnet wants to flip over if I hold it in place. It's starting to flip over now. You actually see the field. This is a complex field geometry, but as I'm doing this, bringing it over here and flipping it, you'll actually see this pole. You see that right between? Let me get it here. There you go. You see it right there? See that little black spot? That's not on the pole on the magnet underneath, and it's not on the pole of the magnet above. That is the lowest pressure mediation between these two magnets, which is not part of the magnet at all, rather almost immediately between the two, the midway point between the two. Same thing is true of gravity. Uh, masses are not accelerating towards one another, but accelerating towards this null pressure point between the two. And the same is true in so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetic attraction at all, rather dielectric acceleration. If I hold the magnet up above in place and flip the poles over, did it pretty quick. You can see the magnet, the ring magnet flip over. So now they're sitting in lowest pressure mediation right here. And it looks just like any other magnet where these magnets are as close as they can get, minus the glass sandwiched in between them. Anyway, I hope that gave you an insight into something. It's really pretty. Everything is just constructive and destructive interference. Everything's the interplay between the magneto and the dielectric, uh, respectively the conjugate geometry of the hyperboloid, which is the dielectric, and the geometry of the torus, 
which is the field geometry of magnetism itself. The loss of energy or inertia manifests as that three-dimensional force vector that we call magnetism, but which is no different than the dielectric itself, except in modality in which it is expressed, just like ice you know, has different properties than regular water, but ice is, of course, water. Ice is just a different temperature modality of water. Magnetism is a different energy modality of dielectricity. Loss of energy or inertia manifesting as the toroidal geometry that we call magnetism. I hope I've made that kind of simple. Here we go, put the ring magnet on top. Get these magnets out of the way. Let you see it from a side on view. I'll cancel out this video. Let me know if you have any questions. You can send me an email below. People like it when I actually get uh, kind of a side on holographic view. You can actually see it up close like that. There you go. Isn't that cool? Let me lift up the ring magnet. You can see it there. Sometimes people like it better when I put it underneath and you can actually see it. You can see where the fail cell is starting to get it burned in. Everybody getting these lines in the cell, which means it needs to be rebuilt, even though they built it up like about an hour ago. And maybe lastly, yeah, the cube magnet. You actually get a dramatic effect from the cube magnet. And here, there we go. Now which side's the North Pole and which side's the South Pole? This one is red shifted, so this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole. Thank you so much for watching. Contact information is below. If you like these vid videos, any donation is always incredibly warmly welcome. Let me know if you have any questions, and I read every comment. Hope you have a lovely week.